Hi, I'm MJ for Simon Medical. Today we're going to be going over the Stealth S7 from Medtronic. I'm now going to demonstrate the cranial application. To launch the application, all you need to do is either single click the card and click launch, or you can double click the card. Once you enter the application, you'll select the physician. You can create multiple physicians by adding or removing. Simply select add physician, add new surgeon. You can either copy a current profile or create a new one from scratch. In this instance, we'll copy Dr. X, save surgeon. That new surgeon is added. From there, you can add specific procedures, tumor resection, shunt placement, and biopsy. These indicators on the right indicate either optical or EM tracking. We will demonstrate each. Entering into our surgeon's tool card, you can either double click or single click in advance. We'll use optical tumor resection for this instance. You can single click and advance forward or double click the application that you wish to utilize. At this point, we select our patient, scroll through the images and validate that you have a full series. Make sure that you have full anatomy. You can zoom in on the anatomy to validate that you have full anterior and posterior aspects as well as sides. If facial anatomy is cut off, you can still use the scan, but you'll still have to use manual registration techniques, which I'll go over next. To validate that your equipment is connected properly, you'll see a green indicator line connecting the surgeon monitor and the stealth station. Hit the next button. You'll see the various instruments that you may need for this particular procedure. The blunt tip buholes pointer, patient reference frame, the SureTrack connectors, scope probe, or passive catheter introducer for shunt placement. In this instance, we're only going to use the blunt tip and the patient reference frame. Again, step forward in the navigation pane to planning. You'll see that we have an orthogonal view consisting of your coronal, sagittal, axial, and 3D views. All three views can be adjusted and manipulated to the surgeon's preferences. For instance, if we want to adjust contrast or level and width, click on the adjust button, and much like a DICOM viewer, we can adjust the scaling, level, and width of the image to facilitate maximum visibility of the anatomy. Click the button again to turn it off that feature. To fine tune your camera angle, click the camera tracking icon. Tracking view will pop up. Optimal distance is approximately six feet from the patient's anatomy or your reference frame. In the event you have a bad looking 3D model, you can go in and adjust the 3D model settings by clicking model in the top left hand corner. Go to build 3D model. Select the registration model that's already there. These are automatically created by the set. Hit the threshold button. You'll get a pop-up warning. Hit continue. Cleaning up the model will give you a much easier time in registration. Once you're done, click done. Once you're satisfied with your images, just click forward on the browser to go to registration. In registration, we have three different options to choose from. Tracer, point merge, and touch and go. For this demonstration, we're going to use point merge. I've pre-selected some points on the anatomy and we'll gradually touch these and register the patient. To select these, find topographical or fiducial landmarks, select them one by one, and store them. Once stored, you'll be able to register your 3D volume. To fine tune the adjustment of the camera, click on the camera tracking button on the bottom right corner. Tracking view will pop up. Use this to fine tune your aim. Optimal distance is approximately six feet. Let's undock and aim the camera. Using the button on the handle, you can engage the laser and aim the pointer at your patient's anatomy. To verify your probe, place the tip of the probe in one of the three provided divots. To register the patient, touch the predefined anatomy in sequence. The system will auto-update as each point is stored. Beep. 
Once an accuracy has been achieved, move forward by hitting next on the frame or using the next to navigate. Have your surgeon verify anatomy by touching known landmarks on the patient, such as the right lateral canthus, medial canthus, tip of the nose, nasion, labella, left or right tragus, or any other anatomy that's able to be located on the patient. You'll see here that we can actually navigate on this particular model and access the tumor directly. To set up the axiom for navigation, make sure that your EM emitter is approximately four inches away from the patient's head. A good rule of thumb is a fist width away. Plug in your individual components. You can have up to eight instruments on the field at any given time, and then proceed to do your navigation as normal. Verify your equipment by making sure that there's a green connection from one component to the next. If anything is red, verify that the connection is made. To begin tracer, three points on the anatomy will be picked. First, the tip of the nose, nasion or glabella approximately, and three centimeters to the left. Once those three points have been established, you begin tracing a pattern on the patient's anatomy. We're looking to specifically identify the topography so that the computer can match the anatomy. Trace similarly to the diagram shown on the screen while holding the foot switch. Registration and axiom is much the same. Using point merge, we touch the chosen landmarks, we'll hear a confirmation tone, and move to the next point. Once an acceptable registration metric is achieved, hit the next button either on the pad or on the screen. Have your surgeon verify anatomy by touching known landmarks. Lateral canthus, medial canthus, tip of the nose, acoustic meatus, or the tragus, any verifiable anatomy. Here's our area of interest, the tumor. This has been a demonstration of the Axiom system under cranial navigation on the S7 by Medtronic. I will now demonstrate the ENT application. To launch the ENT application, hover over the card. You can either single click or double click to launch the application. Once you launch the application, we're going to select a standard profile. You can double click the standard profile or any other surgeon profile that you choose to add. For this instance, we're going to select standard FES, and we're going to use a preloaded exam. We can click next. Verify that your surgeon monitor, axiom emitter, and controller are all showing green status. If there are red indicators on any of those components, double check the connection. In this step, also verify the instruments that you'll be using for this procedure. Make sure that you have one form of head frame or another as well as your straight suction, standard instrumentation provided in the ENT tool file. Make sure that your patient tracker is centered on the anatomy appropriately and matches what you've got in the real world. Also make sure that your axiom emitter is approximately four inches away from the head. We're now going to begin tracer registration. Prior to registration, make sure that you attach your instrument tracker appropriately. This is keyed and the wire will fall off the tailing end of the instrument. You are now ready to navigate. To begin registration, verify your probe in the divot, then hit the next button. You'll get a five second countdown. Make sure that the probe tip is on the skin. Begin tracing on the anatomy, staying on bony anatomy only, tip of the nose, the sides of the nose are all fair game. Avoid the cheeks, lips, or any other soft, movable tissue. The more of the head you can include in the field, this will aid in accuracy. Once the system calculates that the registration is successful, verify some landmarks, such as lateral canthus, medial canthus, tip of the nose, 
or any other pertinent anatomy that you find necessary. If this is satisfactory, hit the next button and we'll begin our navigation. Utilization of other tool tips can be facilitated by changing the tracker to another instrument. Multiple trackers can be employed, up to eight with the S7, four using the ENT. To verify each probe, merely place the probe in the divot, and now that probe is verified as well, and we can track accurately with that. Again, verify known anatomy for verification. Available is a standard ENT tray with straight suction, curved suctions, ostium seeker, registration probe, as well as the patient reference frame and head holder. This has been a demonstration of the ENT software on the S7 platform from Medtronic by Simon Medical. I will now demonstrate the spine and trauma application. We're going to utilize a previously loaded exam. Once the exam is selected, we'll hit navigate. In this view, we're going to utilize trajectory one, trajectory two, a probe's eye view, and a synthetic lateral, which can be manipulated to accommodate the view or position of the patient anatomy on the field. We'll now launch into spine and trauma. Single click and launch, or you can double click the card. Once the application is launched, we'll go ahead and move into the standard profile. You can double click this to move forward. From here, we'll select randomly arm imaging with optical tracking. Again, double click. From this point, the system will expect to see the O-arm. In this instance, we already have a preloaded exam and we'll follow through with that. We need to make sure that we add all the necessary instrumentation. You can add or remove instruments by using this tool card. For this, we're going to include the mass dilator, three nav locks, in this case, the sharp awl, the orange, and violet. We'll also utilize the Solera drivers and the Solera solid taps, non-cannulated. With these now installed, we need to verify the instrumentation. We're going to verify each probe by placing the tip of the probe in the divot. Show it to the camera and we'll hear a confirmation tone indicating that each that probe is verified. Next, we'll do the mass dilator, the purple tap, orange screwdriver, and the gray awl. Once the tool cards turn green, you can then move forward. You can also verify later, but it's a good idea to have a scrub tech verify these before you're actually in the procedure. We're gonna verify the anatomy that the surgeon wants to work on by using the ball tip probe to find the pedicle of L3 in this instance. Once the correct angle is determined, the surgeon may choose to switch to an awl to make a starter hole. Once the hole's been made, you can then switch to the appropriate size tap. In this instance, we have a 6.5 millimeter non-cannulated tap. Trajectory one and two show a good angle, and we'll begin to place Once the tap is deeply enough into the pedicle, the surgeon will back this out, and he's ready to install his screw. From this point, the surgeon can implant his screw in the desired trajectory, and move to the next level. To do the inner body prep work, we can use the mass dilator for instance. Once the surgeon finds the trajectory, he can then introduce the correct size dilators to perform the discectomy. If we want to calibrate a non-navigated instrument, in this case the vertex screwdriver, we're going to attach the SureTrack 2 tracker. The calibration procedure needs to be followed. Calibration starts with the pointer showing which divot we're going to verify the probe in. Thank you for watching. This has been the S7 demonstration of spine and trauma.
If you need further assistance or would like to order parts, systems, or components, call Francis Simon at Simon Medical at 916-380-9733. For more information, you can also visit simonmedicalinc.com. Thanks for watching.